The future of VR gaming in 2025. VR gaming is on the rise. Everyone is now hooked into their fantasy world and playing their favorite games. It is also pretty astonishing that this is becoming a billion dollar industry and its future is now far more exciting than ever. So, in this video, we take a nice look at the future of VR gaming in 2025. To start off, younger generations' embrace of VR and dominance over the Quest Kingdom may assure its survival. Their willingness to wear a hefty headgear every day might be interpreted as a sign of long-term progress. You'd be shocked how many companies in the past couldn't keep grown-ups in their headsets from ending up in the cupboard after only a few months of ownership. The younger user base has grown so large that many developers who once focused on quality single-player games are now chasing trends by building free-to-play titles that will go viral on TikTok or YouTube. Influencers such as J-Man Curly and others make decisions about what the next popular game will be. Creating a high-quality game with excellent plot, gameplay, and visuals is no longer a guarantee of success, especially when the majority of active players aren't necessarily interested in that type of material. So, let's begin by stating that the glory days of PC VR are past. There's still some very interesting stuff going on in the gaming industry, so there's plenty of pretty cool flat games to enjoy in VR. But the general scenario isn't ideal for most users. Now, I know I've already started talking about game quality, but before we get into that, let's speak about the present status of hardware in VR. Many may argue that the MetaQuest 3S was a race to the bottom, in which the cheapest, crappiest hardware was distributed to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. But we disagree. One, the value is undeniable. It provides far more than anything else, and they've hit the correct mix between weight, battery life, performance, and heat, all of which you should be concerned about in a gadget that goes on someone's head and needs to be very functional. They struck the correct balance, which I know is not easy. There are headsets that do not have a built-in operating system or standalone hardware. All they do is connect to a PC, but they are nevertheless significantly heavier, less comfortable, or generate more heat. To be honest, they hit a very decent balance. However, one component of this is rarely discussed. Meta is flinging money around. They often sold the initial Quest headsets at a loss, which means no one else in the business can compete. Apple is the only firm that offers a truly high-end XR headset, but it costs nearly $4,000 and barely functions as a gaming gear. Speaking of games, there is another area where many people have serious troubles. VR gaming is routinely compared to flat-screen gaming, and people must recognize that the two are quite distinct media. Now, I'll take Batman Arkham Shadow as an example, because it's one of the best VR games ever created and was recently published. It is absolutely as amazing as the Arkham titles that were released on flat screens. However, those games were launched about 10 years ago, and I would place it right next to them. They are still wonderful games, but when it comes to graphics and gameplay mechanics, they are a little behind the curve, which is where VR is. We must realize that VR is behind the curve in terms of flat screen gaming, as compared to overall mechanics or gameplay time, as well as 8A quality. Yes, standalone hardware is a part in why games aren't more robust, but the fundamental reason is that the money simply isn't there in the VR market yet. It's increasing, and games are getting bigger and better. Yet first-party VR games like Half-Life Alex, Horizon Call of the Mountain, and Batman Arkham Shadow aren't profitable in the business. Companies are spending a lot of money to assist expand the VR sector and promote their products. Other VR studios are unable to build games of this grade because they require a return. So, while it is obvious that VR games lag behind flat screen games in terms of graphics, general gameplay mechanics, and length, we must recognize that they are completely different games and many features of traditional gaming do not work in VR. VR is far more about mechanics, which is why titles like Beat Saber simply explode. They would never work on a flat screen, so it's different mechanically, but also in how people play the games. You can't have a physically demanding game and expect to play it like World of Warcraft, where you sit in front of a computer screen for 12 hours a day. It just doesn't work or add up. 
So, for the previous few years, developers have been going through a lot of growing pains, figuring out what works and what doesn't, from level design to mechanic design to storytelling, every aspect. It's one thing to sit on your couch and watch Kratos from God of War beat someone up, and you're like, wow, this is an incredible scene. But it's quite another to sit in a VR environment and simply listen to people talk. It becomes terribly boring. It simply does not function. You need a very different delivery mechanism, so we're going through the processes right now, figuring out where VR falls short or where it succeeds. And fortunately, over the last seven to eight years, a lot of companies have learned what works. And what works is really different from flat screen games. Now, there's no shortage of little kids in free-to-play games on the flat screen world. Obviously, if you jump into something like Roblox or any other title like that, you're going to get a bunch of squeakers. But you see that in VR as well, particularly in their main social app, Horizon Worlds. They're attempting to promote this. But if anyone over the age of 16 enters a Horizon world and is besieged with squeakers, they're unlikely to return. So this is something they must deal with. And as I previously stated, the considerably smaller player population makes multiplayer experiences difficult as well. So, yes, it's a difficult circumstance. But that's to be expected as you mature. High-quality games and expansion will strengthen the player base. You want them to be strolling around the streets with one of your, you know, AR glasses, whatever the case may be, so it's understandable that they're targeting a younger demographic. But it doesn't provide people with an overall positive experience in many of these VR environments. And there's nothing worse than taking up a multiplayer game, only to discover that it's almost completely dead online after only a few weeks. It not only discourages users from purchasing more of these games, but it also discourages developers from producing similar experiences. When it comes to Sony and the PlayStation VR 2, it's evident that the firm isn't very interested in virtual reality. This is not personal, and there are likely many individuals within Sony who believe in the technology. But in plain terms, Sony has much bigger fish to fry. They've overspent on some of their greatest IPs, like as Horizon. They blew an incredible $200 million or more on the creation of the absolutely disastrous Concord. And I'm not sure who had the bright idea to build a Horizon LEGO game, but it was also a pretty costly disaster. Even if the PlayStation VR 2 was a huge success overall, it still only made a small profit. Thus, it's not important in business terms. There is no road for them to build their VR industry to the point where it begins to generate significant returns. So they are attempting to make lemonade out of lemons by using the PC VR adapter to help sell off the remaining supply of headsets. They're also reportedly working with Apple, and the PlayStation controllers should be compatible with the Apple Vision Pro in the near future. Next, we have Battlemarked, a new installment in Resolution Games' Demio series, inspired by Dungeons & Dragons, which will be available on all VR platforms in the fourth quarter of 2025. You must gather a group of other adventurers and set off on a new epic adventure in the Forgotten Realms where ancient rivalries, murky machinations, and the allure of evil power threaten to tear Farron apart. Battlemarked will use Demio's great action role-playing engine, allowing you to join up to four players in cooperative multiplayer or embark on an adventure totally on your own. It promises dynamic turn-based combat and features from popular Dungeons & Dragons classes. And let's talk about Apple. While they are a newcomer to the XR sector, their product is far too expensive for broad appeal, and they have never been focused on gaming, so they will never deliver on what I'm looking for in the XR industry today. They're gearing up to compete with Meta in terms of all-day wearables or simply becoming the next computer platform. There are also a few other minor players. Pico is the closest to Meta, although they are not in the Western market and do not sponsor games as much. The true wildcard that can shake things up are the planned Android XR headsets and Meta's release of the Horizon OS, which gets me to the video's conclusion. Obviously, additional competition is beneficial. Android XR has the potential to shake things up significantly. The Horizon OS becoming available to everyone is also significant because it allows for new hardware. So if someone wants to make more robust hardware, OLED screen, possibly more powerful processor, whatever the case may be, they want to make an enthusiast quest. Someone can now do so, and there is a market for it. 
Since the launch of the Apple Vision Pro, Meta appears to be on high alert, with Zuckerberg clearly determined to stay in the race. As a result, the Quest 3 and 3S are significantly more competent today, with new features being released virtually regularly. Streaming has been one of the primary reasons for considering these headsets, in addition to traditional VR, MR gaming. If you're interested in culture and entertainment, this could be a compelling reason to get one. But it's also an area where Meta could improve. Watching movies or shows is still one of the most enjoyable activities. You can set up a huge cinema screen anywhere, but the lack of official apps from providers such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus is evident. Using the browser works, but it appears to be a temporary solution because it lacks the entire experience, which includes no native 3D content, themed locations, or offline downloads. With Quest 3 out for a while, this should be widely available by now. So, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Stay close.